Hello and welcome back. This is Double O Debbie and this is episode 98 of my Dire Wolf 21.18 Let's Play. <laughs> Yay! Um, today we're going to be adding some more things to our crafting network, our AE2 network, uh, to make life easier. <laughs> uh, Kind of started a little bit already so let's do this i did make in between episodes this little uh wireless crafting terminal and i i was able to place it into a bracelet slot don't know uh if that is supposed to happen but it works um i now can push Control g and open up my R, my RS <laughs> uh, terminal, uh, and I can push Shift G and open up my AE2 network. So uh, it's pretty snazzy. Um, I do have what is this uh, raw bauxite? Uh, I think I've gotten um, some extra stuff from the miner. It must have just started working because I, I had this running for a little while this morning and I wasn't getting anything different uh, unless they like, just added it. So, but it's only like one. I got a raw bauxite raw lead raw nickel uh, or unless they just they changed it oh they they changed all the ores no oh, i mean i just did it oh i guess it had been sitting in there for a while uh from being built up and i did update the pack so it must be getting these new things too that's no good uh, okay so i don't see an awful lot of these things getting built up Everything else seems to be just the same. Maybe I'll go see if I can process these things up. Uh, probably the uranium will go. Yeah. The nickel probably won't go in there. I bet we can put the tin in there. Look, I got two different nickels. One from immersive and one from thermal. Uh, lead should be able to go in there. Don't know about the bauxite though. The bauxite cannot go in there. Either can the nickel or the nickel. <laughs> so I'll probably just throw these in here and smelt them up. End of story. <laughs> uh, if I see them again, uh, I guess I do have a little bit of room over here that I could get some of them processed. I mean, this is where the nickel is going anyway, in the aluminum. It would be kind of sad if they put multiple ores. <laughs> if they put multiple ores in there, I'm doomed, dum doom, dum doom. Uh, so, I have this wireless crafting grid for AE. I also had to build this little wireless access point and put a couple of boosters in there. I'm like, I put four in there and it only took it from 16 to 24. So I'm like, uh, my base over here is huge and I, I would really like to be able to, you know, come down here and be able to ship G to access it, but I can't <laughs> because it only does 24 blocks. So there is a solution though. There is a infinity booster. Let's see. At infinity. 
uh, infinity range booster right here. Dun dun dun! And it takes three wireless boosters, some Eye of Ender, some Netherite, and another star. But then I should be able to have infinite range. Let's see, at infinity, at AE infinity. So this is the only thing. Oh, you could put a dimension card. What does that mean? You can use it in any dimension too? What? That is whack. Uh, maybe we'll get that later, but this is what I want to focus on right now <laughs> because I would really like to access my terminal everywhere in this space and even any anywhere else would be good too but the base uh, so pro G to get in to here and I need to grab out another star oh we only have seven I might need to run that a little bit uh, we also need some netherite ingots so we can get that taken care of. And some eyes of ender. Is it bad that I'm using my RS system to uh, make stuff for my AE system? I think it was just two of those. And then we need some of these ranged cards. So... I believe we'll have to put the booster in there. Uh, so, boost, booster. There it is. Infinity range booster. Boom. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's great. Uh, what? Look, it says nine. Blah, 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 meters. Cool. And it's using less AE a tick as well. Um, <laughs> this, the way to get your, uh, your crafting grid for AE is a little bit different than uh, refined storage. Uh, so like, uh, you have to make the doodad here, the wireless crafting terminal, and you have to charge it. Uh, but to link it, you have to put it on your security terminal on your network. You just boop, put it in there, and then it's linked to your system. I forgot all about this step because this step is different in RS. <laughs> so it, it is required that you have the, the security terminal to link your wireless crafting terminal to uh, your, your system. Awesome. So we got that. Um, I went to um, Jake's base today and visited. And uh, he has, of course, he has a lot more advanced stuff for AE2 than I have because he went AE2 and I went RS. Uh, but uh, he has a, a another pattern encoder or pattern terminal. It's called the pattern access terminal. Uh, and I would like that. So let's say pattern access. That's what we're looking for right here. Pattern access terminal. Uh, yeah, and we can just control click something to get one of those because we already have, I don't know. Uh, that might take it a minute. I would also like to, I got a lot of ideas uh, looking around Jake's face. Didn't I push... No crafting CPUs are available. Oh, it's still making one. Okay, it's making some processors. It's taking a long time though. Did I did I mess something up? Uh, 
Um, oh, dude, I think I think this has to be. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix this back. I hope I. I think I just yoinked my system. I moved it up there because I wanted this to be able to put things directly into there. But I, I, it's going to have to have another node, I guess, to get from uh, this to uh, this point. How did that get automatically connected? Like, I didn't connect it. Oh, there must be a card here in the west. Yeah. So let's take that out. Um yeah. <laughs> I'll get it, I gotta fix this real quick. I knew I had a had an extra card for some reason. Okay, so have to get uh, this stuff out of here and into the pattern provider. Uh, so I need the insert card here. What is this on yellow? And this is on yellow, extracting only those. So there, it should should have fixed it then. Yes, yes, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> I'm glad. Emmy pattern access terminal. Now I'm gonna need another cable. Well, that's a breakpoint system. Yay! It didn't. I think I only have. I think each grab counts as one, two, three, four. And I have uh, this importer, so that's fine. But I don't know if the access point counts as one, though. That would be interesting. Or the security terminal, for that matter. Uh, yeah. Okay, so fixed that. And we have the pattern access terminal which allows us access to uh, all of our different molecular assemblers, <laughs> which is great. Uh, so we don't have to actually come over here and manually insert these patterns. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, this would be, I guess, like the same block as the RS, um, The crafting monitor. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So we got our pattern access terminal to put in our things. I got a lot of good ideas about expanding my uh, my little setup here uh, from from Jake and getting more pattern providers uh, and more molecular assemblers. So, yeah, uh, I was looking at Jake's setup, and he has just a line of pattern providers with four molecular assemblers attached to each pattern provider. Um, well, technically, this only has three. No, no, it's only two. No, they do get three. This one is a third. One, two, and three is attached to that. So I don't know, they kind of share some of them, so that could be bad if you're doing a lot of crafting and some of those are being used by other pattern providers. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Um, what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit bigger um, and possibly get another one because each, uh, I learned from Jake that each little multi-block structure only takes up one channel. So I could add some more multi-block structures so that I can handle more than one crafting job at a time. And I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty darn good. Uh, so we could get like another crafting monitor, a crafting storage, and a crafting co-processing unit in another little multi-block structure and still uh, and be able to process two items at the same time, which would be pretty silly. <laughs> Um, so let's try to do that. I do have a, a co-processing unit already. Um, and let's see, crafting monitor. The crafting monitor I don't think is necessary. Do I have the auto? Oh. Yeah, this is annoying. <laughs> Crafting monitor. That's what we want right there. I guess I don't. So I don't even have a storage monitor. And I don't have a level emitter. I would have to do like a whole line. But I. Okay, let's look. Uh, doo -doo. That's all I have. I have the crafting storage automated, but not the um, at the pattern provider. So I don't have the 64k crafting storage or the crafting monitor. So. Let's try to get that, I guess. The crafting monitor. Um, we already, I think we have the crafting unit uh, on automatic. Yes, here it is, the crafting unit. Uh, so that means all we need is the storage monitor. Oop. And then I, I think we got the panels. Let's look. Do I have the panels? I don't. I do not have the panels. So let's make the panel. It's just an illuminated panel. This one. Link. Okay. There's our panel. Uh, and then we need the level emitter. Um, do I need to teach it a redstone torch? Yes. And then uh, redstone torch. And it should know. Oh, another thing I would need to teach it is a stick. Stick. Just a regular stick. No, just a regular stick. Um, yeah, just uh, use some logs, dark oak, and then we'll we'll just like grab some dark oak, drag, <laughs> dark, dark oak from there, and hopefully that will be enough for a little while. Uh, so here we go. Crafting monitor. And hopefully some of these patterns will overlap with others as well. So we have the crafting monitor, the 64k crafting storage, and I guess what we would need now, oh we don't have the CPU co-processing unit. Uh, 
So let's do that. Oh, what are you doing? There we go. Oh, this one's easy. There's our co-processing unit, uh, 64K crafting storage, and the crafting monitor, everything we need. Uh, also, I would like to be able to get some dense cable because that would help a lot too. So what does it take to get dense cable? Dense smart cable is what we want. This guy, I think. Dense covered cable. And then we need the looks. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I guess you do the Fluix ME covered cable. Oh, it's this one. Right? Oh, I need more patterns. Ah, I did the wrong thing. There we go. Uh, and then the Fluix Emmy covered cable, which is just this and the Fluix glass cable. Do I have the Fluix glass cable? I, I do, I do, uh, but I don't have the quartz fiber recipe. That's what I learned. I need the quartz fiber. So let's follow this to here, then to here, and then to here. Quartz fiber. You can go there. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I didn't go back far enough. There we go. There we go. We have the dense cable, uh, the smart cable, the covered cable, and just the regular. Oh, I think, wouldn't this have to be dense smart cable? No, let me see. So I definitely want the smart cable, white smart cable. Okay, so it doesn't take, oh, you can either, I see you can do, you can either make the dense covered cable like this with four of the regular covered cables and then add redstone and glowstone to it and that makes a, a smart cable. So it would probably be better to make your smart cable once it's dense uh, like this and then add, oh you can't add Can't you just add like redstone and glowstone to it to make it the smart cable? Yeah. So it'd be better to make your smart cable the dense one version rather than the smaller version because then you're using four redstone and glowstone per cable, whereas this way you're only using one per cable. Hmm. So am I using the smart cable? 
Yes, I am. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm actually making the, the, the dense cable smart, not dense covered cable. Okay, I think that that should work, hopefully. So this isn't making smart cable, it's just making covered cable, and then we're turning it into dense smart cable. I still don't have like a regular smart cable, but I think that's okay. Uh, so maybe I should make smart cable too, just, just the regular one, this one, just one extra step. And that way, if I just need the regular cable, I can use it too. So good times. Um, so let's get a, I hate when everything bounces around, a uh, crafting unit. Oh, I thought I must have put the wrong one in there. Uh, oh, it does say a bright illuminated panel on there. It's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to just get the illuminated panel illuminated panel there we go and a boop okay now do you work crafting monitor yes uh there we go. There we go. It's done. Crafting monitor. Uh, and now we need another 64K storage. Nice. Awesome. So... <laughs> I just wish I could speed this up some more because uh, it does take a long time. Maybe if I made two machines, uh, I would be afraid it would get it would get mixed up somehow. I don't know, maybe maybe if I just added another one on the end here that could handle multiple uh, multiple end products. That way it if it has you know it can do more than one. So there are four machines producing stuff, but only one doing the final product. My concern would be, though, that one machine would get the printed silicon and the redstone, and then the other would get the logic circuit, and then it would stop everything up. I don't know. I guess it would just, I would just have to see, <laughs> I would just have to see what would work. Work. Uh, now... These little multi-block structures are supposed to be a rectangle of some sort. No, I want I want that on top. I do like having that up 
a little bit. Boink. Um, so I, I don't know. Do I need? What if I just have another little cable connecting the two? Or does it have to be on the main line? Yeah, it looks like it's using up two channels now. Sweet, so that works. Nice. Uh, now, the thing is, you can have, um, you can make this bigger as, you know, you can do like another row back here. We can add more processing and more storage uh, for both of those structures uh, without adding any more channels. So why wouldn't we want to do this? So let's get like another proce pro processing unit uh, for each one and maybe another storage. Oh, I'm going to need some more crystals. I have not set that up yet. I've been meaning to. Uh, so I guess I'll have to steal some more out of here. Uh, this is going to have to wait until, uh, until I can get some more time to set that up. I did get the other one moved to where I want it, and then I can set this this other guy up over here is my plan somewhere <laughs> somehow this is gonna happen and we'll do it okay so we should have those now yay Awesome. Now I wonder what this, uh, are those blinking because they're being used? I can't know, but that, that sounds pretty cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> Are we still going? Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. It's doing, it's doing the stuff and things. Awesome. Wow, that is taking a while. I guess um, they probably don't have to be 64K. Uh, let's go ahead and get our CPUs. Um, that still leaves us with like one other spot. Uh, 64Ks are pretty intensive, so Maybe let's just put another two crafting units. That would be swell. So we're adding two crafting co-processing units. Aha, look at that. We're double crafting. Yes. And they're both waiting on this one system that I can't speed up anymore. Get all this stuff. Yeah, definitely need to get that quartz. Look, I'm down to 384 seeds. Ah. So good. Yeah, I will definitely get that set up eventually. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, right. Our processors are ready. Awesome. And I don't want to hook that up to this one because it will probably break it uh, until I get it finished with that 64K. Okay. 
wait. Is that just one? Oh, it was just one. Okay, so let's put you there. See, it kind of broke the structure when it's not completed. Now that I did that, it is complete again. Uh, so I have to make another 64K for this guy, but I don't have crystals. So I will, I will get that crystal set up so that we can start adding on uh, to our network and <laughs> be super cool and awesome. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to leave the episode here. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.